Hello, I'm Melissa. I use the pronouns she and her. I'm doing my bachelor's of social work at Ryerson University, and I'm currently a placement student at For a Safer Space. Today, I'm going to be talking about skills that can be used for more effective communication. So communication in its most basic form refers to the sending and receiving of messages between individuals, either through verbal or nonverbal means. Modes of communication include speech, writing and other graphical representation, signs, signals, and behaviors. It is a way of creating and exchanging meaning between individuals, and human beings are unique in that we can use language to communicate with one another. There are three basic styles of communication that I'm going to talk about today. There's passive, aggressive, and assertive communication. We're all capable of using all three and may tend to choose to use them in different contexts. So for example, someone may communicate passively when talking to their boss and switch over to an aggressive style of communication when talking to a friend. <clears throat> so passive communication is where you will neglect yourself and put the needs, desires, and feelings of others first, even at your own expense. So one is not expressing or standing up for their own needs when they use passive communication. And the basic associated thought with this style of communication is I am not worthy. The kind of body language that is used has eyes pointed downward or away, hunched shoulders, fidgeting feet and hands. The language style is apologetic, submissive, vague, self-deprecating, soft-spoken and quiet. And its consequences tend to be feeling taken advantage of, feeling unheard, not having one's own needs met and feeling generally bad about oneself. In aggressive communication, a person is only concerned with their own needs, wants and feelings while ignoring those of others even if your needs get in the way of those of others. It shows an unwillingness to compromise and the basic associated thought is you are not worthy. Body language is staring or overly direct eye contact, pointing, clenched fists, uh, and dramatic movements. The language style is a loud or angry tone, insulting, sarcastic, patronizing, disrespectful, and frequent interruption. Its consequences are negative effects on relationships, frequent arguments, feelings of anger and frustration, and causing others to feel negatively about themselves. Finally, in assertive communication, there's a healthy balance between passive and aggressive communication. You state your own needs and advocate for them to be met. And you listen to acknowledge and respect the needs of others at the same time. This shows a willingness to compromise and its basic associated thought is we are both worthy. Body language associated with this will be a relaxed appearance, appropriate eye contact and appropriate gestures. The language style used is firm but respectful tone, confident, relaxed, firm, polite, respectful and not interrupting. Its consequences are positive relationships, fairness in meeting the needs of yourself and others, positive outcomes for both parties and feelings of confidence. So I'm going to give an example of how these three communication styles can be used uh, when facing a particular scenario. So the scenario here is that you're at a restaurant and the server brings you the wrong dish. Using passive communication, you would say, it would be too much of an inconvenience for everyone if I asked the server to correct their mistakes. So I'll be quiet and just eat what they brought, even if I don't really like what they brought me. So here you would be, you would not be considering your own desire to enjoy the meal and only thinking about how you may inconvenience others and you do not, would not end up having your own needs met. If you're using aggressive communication, you would say something uh, to the server, like, I cannot believe that you brought me the wrong dish. You are completely incompetent. Please, uh, not please, but correct your mistake immediately. Um, in this scenario, you're only considering your own needs and feelings and will end with the server feeling negatively about themselves. 
using assertive communication, you would explain the situation to the server. So you would say, you seem to have brought the wrong order. I understand that this was just a mix up with the kitchen and not your fault. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience, but would you mind bringing the right dish when you have a chance? So here you will end up having your needs met and the server will not end up feeling badly about the mix up. So there are different ways uh, to practice using assertive communication and one is through the use of I statements. So during a tricky or sensitive conversation, it is easy to unintentionally place blame on someone else or vice versa, which takes away from the ultimate goal of problem solving and can escalate a simple conversation into a full-blown argument. So using I statements makes it less likely that you will come across as placing blame during one of these conversations. They allow you to practice speaking assertively since they make you take responsibility for your own thoughts and feelings. A good way to format an I statement is by saying, I feel blank when you blank. So for example, if you're having a sensitive conversation with a partner about them coming home very late without calling, you could say, I feel worried when you don't tell me you'll be getting home late instead of saying something like, you can't just come home late without calling, it's inconsiderate. Using the I statement comes out as less accusatory, so the other person is less likely to go on the defensive, which would only escalate the issue even further. Instead of telling someone that they did something wrong, you're letting them know that you're feeling something and they have the power to help make it better. The I statement emphasizes the importance of the issue, and if it isn't used, the way you are feeling may be left out altogether. Sharing the feeling part lets the other person understand your perspective and empathize with how their actions affect you. The I statement is also clear and concise, explaining how you feel and why you feel that way without negating the feelings of the other person. Of course, using an I statement is not a license to say whatever you want. You still need to be mindful that what you say is tactful, reasonable, and does not hurt the other person. Another way of using assertive communication is through reflections. So listening is just as important as self-expression when it comes to good communication. More than just hearing, it also involves thinking, interpreting, and understanding. Reflection has to do with repeating back what someone has said to you in your own words. So for example, if someone tells you that they have been feeling stressed about uh, work and still feels like they're in a bad mood when they come home, you can use reflection by saying work has been so stressful and it causes you to feel frustrated all the time. This acts as confirmation that you've not only heard but also understand what the other person has said. It validates the person's feelings and encourages further sharing because there's now trust that you are really listening. And even if the listener's reflection does not turn out to be exactly right, the speaker can correct them and engender further understanding. So some tips for reflection. You should use a tone of voice between a question and a statement, like you are restating what the other person said, but seeking confirmation. Don't just reflect the other person's words, but also listen to their voice and body language as well, and, and include any emotion that you pick up here in your reflection. Uh, do not repeat exactly what they said, but find a way to reword it to show that you understood what they said. If the other person spoke for a long time, you do not need to reflect back everything they said, but just pick out the most important points. Try to focus on emotions as much as possible, and also try to switch up your language as much as possible so you don't sound too repetitive. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day. Bye.